Hey everyone, and welcome to Big Red Homestead. I'm Josh, that's Caleb, and today, spring ball is finally upon us. The winter is over, and we're talking about the three answers Matt Rule needs to find heading into the spring game and into this 2024 season, looking for, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe more 15. wins this year. And so we're gonna have a lot to talk about today. Caleb, how you doing? I'm doing great. Excited, it's new year where we hit March. So it's, you know, football, I can smell it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's getting close. Right. You know, it's almost fall again. I, you know, but I can't wait. That means March Madness, Nebraska, probably gonna be in it, you know? Let's go. I mean, I think if Nebraska ball wins, a tournament game. The curse is finally over on men's sports. It's finally lifted. And if that happens, then I mean, I think we win the natty. What if we never lose again? <laughs> what if, dude? What if we never lose again? I think there's three overarching things that Matt Rule has to get right this spring. Let's just say some sore spots from last season that got to get sorted out. So lead us here. Where do you want to start? How does Matt Rule get this thing right? First of all, what Matt Rule needs to fix is the messiness that was the first year. You know, not getting the right play calls, right. the penalties, the turnovers, things that you can control. You know, you think of the false starts on the offensive That's line. That's the key, right? Just, you know, the second where the, the offense is moving and you feel like, okay, this is the drive. And again, we, we had an offense last year. Everybody knows there was no room for error and there was plenty of error. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Self-imposed <laughs> boundaries, yeah. Exactly. So we were shooting ourselves in the leg at times. And that is one thing that we have to fix. We have to get better at. Uh, you know, you just look at the playoff teams last year, the college football playoff teams, where you want to be, where you want to aspire to be to. Right. They just, their offense, everything It's like was a military so presence. It's just like, yes. boom, 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 boom. The consistency. Yes. And it's like, and I mean, Matt Rule says watch, it constantly. You know. The standard is raised on those teams. You don't have that false start. You don't call unnecessary timeouts with in the two minute drill you don't fumble the ball at the goal line you don't have that penalty in the crucial moment <laughs> like, communication is just on another level for that team yeah they understand i think the prep is better for those teams you know i think nebraska last year i'd say the coaching staff would even admit they got frazzled during different moments of the game yeah especially late game. mentioned it multiple times you know, where they just didn't have a plan. And I think if they are prepared, you know, I think this uh, Matt Rule did a good job of being prepared more than, you know, his predecessor from coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy beforehand burning some of those timeouts. The great teams don't do that. You look again at the NFL playoffs too. like, again, the highest standard. All those teams had all three, you know, timeouts to give themselves one last chance to get that win. That wasn't us. We had to spend them because we were an inexperienced team. And I'm not saying it was wrong that we spent them, but I want to be a better team where we know what's going on so we don't need to. So that when we do our in in those final moments, in those two minute drills or, or whatnot to win the game, we are ready to go on the same page. Everything is just way more succinct. Definitely. Everybody knows I, what's going to happen. I think the term is really just like Matt Rule needs to use this spring to refine the process raise the standard, and nail the details into the team. That's all it takes. Like you said, the things you can you can control, the penalties, the fumbles, the special teams problems, the two-minute offense, the game management. Year one, you have the excuse. We gave it to Matt. We gave it to, to Frost as well, year one. But the problem was it kept happening. So we need yep. to see Matt Rule like, get it right You know, going into year two. The narrative in the spring so far from what we've seen, the behind-the-scenes video that came out that was so fire, by the way, they just kept saying we were three points away. We we had five games that were within you know one score. You had all of these things like they, they're talking about how they were so close last season, and how many times have we heard that in Nebraska. But you got to fix those details. That really is. So the second I think big thing, and this is specifically of course on the offense, and this is you know specifically to the offense. You have to establish a consistent passing game starting right now in the spring. I mean, we even heard last spring. Like, oh, the defense is way ahead. This talk that, yeah, you know, Jeff Sims is yeah. struggling a little bit. Oh, you know, the quarterback battle. It's not obvious turnovers. who's breaking out. We, yeah, the turnovers were a problem. Fumbling in spring. You know, all of those things that end up coming into fruition that came true during the season. We heard the rumors of that in the spring. So 
Exactly. I'm looking for that positive reinforcement here this spring, and especially when it comes to the passing game and this guy named Dylan Riola. Exactly. I mean, what we plant now and water is going to grow and we're going to harvest in the fall. That is how it goes every year. And like you said, what we heard was being planted, those seeds... That happened, man. They sprouted, man. We we got we harvested a ton of it was fumbles. A huge crop last season. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was a great crop of fumbles, and it was you know an awesome abundance. I mean, our silos were full, stacked of, of false starts and sacks. And yeah, this passing game. I mean, it was. I think that the word for me is desperate. We were desperate to find anything last season, and so what we li- relied on was the deep ball. That's all we. That was our only prayer of a home. And only was, one type of deep ball. <laughs> it was yeah, just thing. a play action pass <laughs> yeah. off an option. That was Triple all option we passes. had. And it worked. It worked somewhat, but we need some consistency. You need the bread and butter. You just We need the side dish that's trusty every single evening. Yeah. You know, for that, the main that, course. That'll fill you up. Yeah, for the main course. We're running the freaking we know, ball. We understand, we understand that's run the ball and understand that's defense for Matt Rule. That's, that's his stake. But we need corn, and the corn is the passing game. Yeah, yeah. And it, we it, that was not present. I mean, Again, the good news is was- is that you you brought you brought in t- two new ingredients this year, and that's Glenn Thomas, of course, coming in as a, coming in as quarterback coach and offensive assistant. Satterfield now the tight ends coach, and then of course you know this guy named Dylan Raiola. You may have heard of him. So, are those two ingredients enough to make this a good side course? <laughs> oh man. You know, and that's all you, I think that's all you want it to be. You don't want to lean on the freshman to be everything right. for us this year. Now, obviously, you want to show that he has everything. I mean, he's a five-star QB for you a reason. You want to see it, He's right? the best. Yeah, I mean, again, your pro comp is Pat Mahomes. And in, in so many Pat ways, Mahomes again. Pat Mahomes X Big Ben. Yes, he he can make all the throws. He doesn't need, you know, Pat Mahomes' knock was footwork. Mine for Ryle would be footwork, but the pro, he just doesn't need it when your arm is that good. What we've seen from the last coaches and the QB coaches is, again, football, like any any sport, especially the quarterback position, is all played up here. And what are, and you know, I think that's why they bring in Thomas. What what are we going to be feeding Ryola, which not in between the lines, but, you know, in between the ears. The, the ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's so important. Hopefully, I think that's a, a better formula. It's a, it's a guy that quarterback's who's, fear. Fear. Oh, yeah. He just, he served him up fear. <laughs> Buffet is a fear. Yeah, and then it makes you feel good again with Harper, who was able to get wins, even though he sure. w- he was a backup. The the Sims thing, I I'm going to call it just a world, like just a fluke, the flukiest of flukes. I, I'm hoping, right? Like that was just right. I mean, last un- season, unreal, obviously, when it comes to the stats, outlier. I mean, in the passing game, we were like 120. We were 122nd in completion yeah. percentage, 109th Bottom in yards per barrel. pass, 128th in passes per game, 128 in pass yards per game, 132nd in INT percentage, and 122nd in QB sack percentage. So I guess that's the other factor here is offensive line, pass blocking, and this front five. I mean, Donovan yeah, Raiola. Is he on the hot yeah, I mean, seat? I th- that's a question that's interesting, I think, for this year. Do you think be this offensive good. line, how much better can it be? You're bringing back Turner Corcoran. You're bringing back Bryce Benhart. That's what worries you a little bit. I mean, I think Bryce obviously had a big upside. Yeah. He athletically, again, he was the highest recruit of them all. So we knew he had, was athletically there, mm-hmm. um, just how engaged he was. I also think, though, the quarterback you bring, I mean, you hear people talk about it. It raises the bar of focus inside the locker room. I think Dylan Ryle could can be an instant game changer, not just for his game, but just on the fact that the team knows you have a guy that you think that you can win a lot of games with. And if that can happen early, I mean, I think, yeah, that just changes the whole the whole DNA of the team sure. in a lot of ways. But yeah, I mean, our offensive line, yeah, it has to improve in a lot of ways. You hope that Justin Evans Jenkins right. can, can be a bump. You're happy that Ben Scott, I mean, I would still love a, a left tackle or two that wasn't from the named portal. Turner Corcoran. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's there was obviously so brutal. many factors last year though. When you have the youngest receiving well, core in the entire Brendan big Hymas. 10, you, you have yep. tr- tons of injuries, disasters at quarterback. You have injuries all over the board and it's your first year as a head coach. So running a new offense, all of those things. And like you look at like last oh, year yeah. with the receiving game, 
I mean, think about like even the details there were a problem. How many times yeah. do we see those switch routes that on the, on the outside that weren't run correctly? Or if you run them correctly, you hit on that seam, you hit a downfield on the sideline. So it's like those yeah, small guys details open, that just didn't see, yeah. weren't yeah, that weren't there. And yeah, not to mention quarterbacks missing guys. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, yeah, on those shorter routes, I think obviously we're going to have a lot more comfortability having a guy who they feel oh. really comfortable with a super strong arm and can throw anything. And he's throwing to Jamal uh, Banks. Come on. Exactly. We have some upgrades at wide receiver. I think we have another really solid wide receiver class coming in with some guys like, you know, uh, Ja'Cory, uh, who could really add stuff to the team right away. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Ja'Cory Barney Jr., I mean, looks really good. Yeah, Keelan yeah. Smith. Some of the freshmen there, I mean, yeah, we'll see. They can really add some stuff. But... Oh, speaking of, by the way, on, on, on Patreon, we're putting out yes. uh, videos reacting to all of the recruits' huddle film. And we're starting with the guys who are going to be here for spring ball. So we're Early going, enrollees, we're going through all the rookie or all of the, the, the freshmen this season. So that's what that, you know, being looking out for that. It's been tons of fun so far and some absolute studs. So watch out. Yeah. Again, I think just having consistency, having that passing identity is just something we didn't have on, on the runs. We kind of knew what we were going to do, but on offense, besides the play action, triple option pass touchdown, we just didn't get a lot. I think part Which of that was the wide receivers. Part of that was the quarterbacks, but I think also part of it was the play call. I don't think that the coach is really set up for a lot of Agreed. success. I thought that the passing, you know, I a mean, lot we of the had way too many drives that ended, that ended in pass, pass, pass for an offense that should never do that. Right. I mean, like, no, it was a situation where it felt like there were times where Satterfield dug a hole. It was like, I'm going to call a pass on first down. Ah, oh, it's incomplete. All right. Well, I got to pass in second. Oh, no, it's incomplete. You know, oh, I got sacked. Oh, geez. You know, now I, yeah. I got to run a screen pass. Satterfield was trying to call the offense as if he was at South Carolina, but he wasn't. And no. we didn't have Rattler. So maybe we do now. And that, and no, that's the upside narrative. And we'll probably talk about that during the offseason. So there are those things with the passing game where I think there's definitely opportunity there. But you want to see that nailed down, get into like that militaristic you know, efficiency during the spring and then really see it on display during the spring game, especially with the talent that's coming in. So that's for sure there. Yep. So what is the final thing Matt Rule's got to get right here in the spring? Turnovers on defense. We have to improve going into this year. If you had one negative thing to say about our defense, it was just the lack of turnovers. A hundredth and takeaways. And so I think that's just something that the defense can look for ways to improve. Again, you know, we were great. You know, we what sent a lot of guys. That? I think we had to send a lot of guys in a lot of ways just because we were young. So that made guys cover bigger areas on the field in a lot of ways in the three, three, five. So there wasn't a lot of room for that. So, you know, it was Tommy Hill who was the one who was getting the most picks. I also think part of it is just um, talent. Part of it is how Tony White calls games. He wants to be aggressive yep. in the rush, but then play, play cushion defense downfield and not get beat deep. So... I would say that his defense isn't necessarily built to force turnovers like some 4-3 defenses are where you try to get after the quarterback and and but we can be better and at play strip aggressive. Sack. We and can that, be better at force 100%. levels. 100%. The biggest thing here is like so yes we were 100th in opponents INT percentage so we just weren't we weren't converting on for how much teams were passing against us. And we were 38th in sack percentage but we could definitely get home more and find yeah and yeah when it comes to strips I mean really strips on the quarterback and you know forced fumbles in general we had a few of them but you could easily yeah. see that you know all of that is the season yeah all of that is what we need to improve and again our defense was great last season what are what is the easiest thing that we can we can circle and 100 percent, it's that in a lot of ways if our sack rate can be you know top 25 adding to the bag of you know how to get off the line i think that they can you know in some ways yeah, we can technically improve a lot. I, you're of that, right. I think that. a lot of it does come from like the individual talent. And we talked about last year how we weren't sure who the the defensive studs were going to be. They emerged throughout the year, and that's obviously credit to the coaching staff. Yeah, for developing guys like Tommy Hill and Omar Brown and Phelan Sanford and Deshaun Singleton to really come up and make plays. And maybe now that you're going to have Buford back there, and he's a guy who absolutely lays the wood. In the secondary, you know, maybe you start seeing a few more, you know, turnovers there. Gifford being back, more confidence to go after the ball and really try to make some plays. That's possible. Yeah. And, uh, but, and some of those guys too, like Gifford was there a few times and he just didn't catch the ball. Right. You know, oh, so I true. Think part of that is true. not taking not taking those opportunities. 
uh, when you have them, uh, as you know, even though some of them were some absolute meatballs out there. Yeah. Uh, just uh, some easy stuff that you should 100% catch. So well, I, part of the negative of having like Glenn Ty Hart. Robinson or Nash as like two premier, like when you're running a 3 3 5 like this, that where they have one of them has to be an edge pass rusher, you're just not going to get home as often when sometimes you shift that line and one of them are on the edge. It doesn't happen as much last year as it did the year before when we were running our, our weird 3 4 that we ran. But I like what we talked about last year was who's going to be the individual pass rusher that really makes the plays. So we, you want to see either like Prince Will come out at Jack or, you know, Cameron Lenhart take that next step while you see yeah. Nash both, and Ty be absolute lockdowns can, yeah. there. Jamari Butler and then even uh, Stephen Thompson coming in from Syracuse. You know, those are all the names there that yeah, you're looking a, to take that next step. Thompson's going to be a big help, I think. Yeah, 100%. Because he's huge. He's and so physical. Turn, yeah, and that turnover area. Yeah, I mean, again, just in those running backs. I think part of it too is you know, the Big Ten, you know, the Big Ten West that we played it, or it just. They're conservative they're offenses. West, they're conservative offenses that run a lot, that um, are comp- complementary. And uh, yeah, yeah but there's to just be fair, a, though, not all out there. I was going to like just to say, like, great. you know, the defense teams did pass against us 54% of the time, which was a hunt, like one of the highest in the country, top 10. So, you know, teams were well, passing out there. They, exactly. They weren't running the ball. So that's where the secondary will have and should have opportunities to go out and get it you know and yeah it really is happening in just the biggest a- moments it, we, we didn't really convert it when we needed them if the, if the defense is the exact same even with the turnover problem obviously the offense can get us to eight or nine wins but if you want to be a team that competes for a big 10 title next big, year big thing this defense has got yeah. to take the ball away it's got to that'll just help the field position so much for the offense too as you know we didn't get to flip the field and so even getting to do that, you know, more than we did, you know, there was po- multiple games where you didn't have a turnover and our offense was happily doing it like two to three times a game. So right. uh, it's, it's got to be a difference maker. One hundred percent. If we if we want to if we want to raise that standard, if that defense wants to raise the standard um, into a, another tier of from being man, you are really solid. Respected you know, to feared. One hundred percent. Do we, we want to be respected in the Big Ten? Or do does everybody knows that when they're they're terrified of like that even if they're up by the seven football. points, their offense could literally lose them the game right now. Like that's what you want to be. Like I was yeah. feared because they take the ball away and they score points. Their defense when they're on the field, that's their best offensive weapon. Right, and it's been for like three years now. So yeah. it's like that's where you want to be where the defense is that good. And I think this defense has the chance to do that, and that's what's exciting. So. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So there it is, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a comment down below. And again, check out the Patreon for the recruiting reaction and huddle film and all of those things. We're having a blast over there and a lot more coming yes. your way over the next few weeks as we get closer to the spring game and fall pra- and spring practice kicks off here end of March. So a lot to talk about. Yeah, and let us know, too, for like, you know, March Madness stuff. Do you want us to do some Nebraska ball? <laughs> do you, you want to do a hangout? If we win, man, mm-hmm. come on. Yeah, if we, if we get to uh, if we if we get well, to when we're in the March final four, of course, right? Yes, yeah, obviously, we'll, we'll, we'd be there. Yeah. We'd we would be there if it was the final four. Yeah, hundred percent. So thanks for watching. But as always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Big Red Homestead. And guys, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Go Big Go Red. Go Big baby. Red.